The Clippers were one of four NBA teams to have media day Friday. Head coach Doc Rivers addressed many topics, including a maintenance plan for Chris Paul, the versatility of new players, and of course, the back and forth with Mavs owner Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban was quoted recently as saying, if you didn't get DJ, your professional life would be over. Yeah, that's a shame. You've had a very successful NBA career, obviously, yeah. um, and had plan B if that didn't happen. No, I would have quit. <laughs> How do you respond, and do you think like the growing feud between the Mavericks and Clippers is good for the NBA? Not really. I don't think it matters anyway. Um, you know, it's really going to be done. Listen, Mark's an owner. I'm a coach. Uh, I don't, unless we're going to play a one-on-one -on -one or something, um, or get in a cage match or something, which you guys can all sponsor. I'm good with either one of those. Uh, you know, I don't think it really matters. I think it's more him talking and me talking, and we're both wasting time. Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan are back for a fifth season together, something that all three can appreciate a little more now. My expectations are for me to just be an all-around better player. Uh, I want to improve every year. Uh, I'm not in Dallas. I'm in Los Angeles uh, with the Clippers and these guys. Uh, but, you know, I'm really excited. We're really excited to get better. we got a lot of guys here who can play, who can go. And uh, I'm just going to do anything I can to help us get better and uh, achieve our ultimate goal. We're going to let him play point guard now until any time he wants to. So. He did say that. He's happy. Like, you happy? Time. He finally happy. Thanks. He throws he throw he me off. You guys recorded it, so y'all got that. Got it. Future Hall of Famer Paul Pierce joins J.J. Redick and Jamal Crawford on the perimeter this season. Besides threes, those three will focus on being influential forces in the locker room, as well as improving the communication on the court. I think, you know, when you first get on a new team, like I was in Washington, you, you, you try to fill out your players, you know, understand it for them, you know, see the different personalities, because with, with each player, you, you don't approach them the same. Uh, everybody has different personalities, uh, everybody has different moods, and so uh, I think that's important for each and every player to learn them. You know, you can't learn that certain players, some players you have to pull to the side, um, and I think it's just going to be a filling out process. Definitely I'm going to say what's on my mind, but I think the most important is, is how you say it, you know, for the most part, you know, with, with your teammates, how you come across. Sometimes you're in the heat of the moment. It may not be the best time to say things. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to be a fill out process. And uh, I think everybody enjoy having me around. I'm easy to get along with. You know, I think a lot of people look at me on TV and think maybe I'm I'm a tough personality, but I'm really a nice guy. He's going to get along with. Let's try to keep it PG-13. Uh, Jamal, JJ, the value of Paul Ed. I think if you look over the last 10, 15 years, you'll say Paul Pierce's name is, is more than a clutch performer than if you had, along with Kobe Bryant and guys of that, that elk. You know, I think you know, whenever he does decide to leave the game, he's going to miss something. I've always felt that about him. He brings something, a swagger, a confidence. Uh, to the game uh, that some of the greatest players in the world have you know, in the history of the game. Uh, to have the opportunity to be on his team, learn from, to bring that experience, uh, the big shot ability, the, the confidence to what any storm. He's seen every situation on the basketball court. He's a champion. You know, and, and it's unbelievable. He bring everything to him. I would just add that I'm very excited to, to play with Paul and to get to experience uh, not only his leadership, but his competitiveness. He's a guy that I've competed against in the playoffs a couple times. And we had some battles back in Orlando and Boston. And I don't think you can uh, overvalue or undervalue that experience. It is what it is. Our group has to figure that out. But it certainly doesn't hurt us to have that leadership and that experience. As far as the bench goes, the Clippers have some options thanks to new additions such as Josh Smith, Lance Stevenson, and Wesley Johnson. The team itself it speaks for itself. So with me, it's just me getting another piece and starting to embrace my role and try to explore it. I think, you know, you know, with the five position, I bring quickness. Um, I'm strong enough where I can, you know, not, not be able to get back down like that. And, I think the four, four, four position, it gives me opportunity to, you know, to, to get the rebound sometimes and kick it and uh, find open guys on the perimeter. And um, just the three position maybe, you know, uh, creating mismatches, uh, being able to 
you know, to try to, you know, to try to get the ball down low to, to force double teams and be able to kick out to, to open, open, open uh, teammates. I just want to win, so I'm going to do it. It's all that matters. Whatever comes with winning, y'all, y'all come up with a name. We go, we go do our best to win. The Clippers will begin the preseason Friday, October 4th, against the Denver Nuggets at the Staples Center. They will then travel to Canada, then China, before returning to Los Angeles for the remainder of the preseason. Training camp starts tomorrow at UC Irvine, and that's where the process of getting on the same page will begin for this team. From Playa Vista, this is Law Murray for Clipper Blog.